Now we're going to paint the cone. If you don't have the uh, cone marching ants available, uh, click select, load selection, hit the drop down menu, choose cone, click OK, and there she is. So come over to your layers palette, let's make a new layer just like we did with the sphere and the cylinder. We'll put like a white background on this, so this is cone white. And you know the drill, I'm not going to show you every little detail anymore. White in the foreground, paint bucket tool, fill the marching ants with white. Come over to the layers palette, make a new layer. It's called cone paint. And color black. Hit B for brush tool. The cone um, is tricky to paint. And let me look at some uh, references here. This is, again, from an old uh, airbrush book. And there are mistakes here. For example, this is too black and it looks very, very two-dimensional up here on the top. But you can see the light is coming from the upper left. Here's the brightest part. There's a little hint of reflected light here, and the darkest region is here. Here's another reference in very, very stark um, light. So we're not going to go this route too much, but you can see how the, the dark area is here. But there's still like this hint of reflected light here. I hope you can see that on your screen and the very brightest region is here. Okay, so we're going to kind of sort of split the difference between these two references and try to interpret this. The um, When painting the cone, it's harder than painting the cylinder or the sphere because you have to follow the contour of the object. So it's kind of like you're going to start up here and kind of fan out so the the tone is going to be narrow to wide, and it's not, it can be challenging. I mean, I'm not going to kid you here. So let's hit uh, B for brush tool, enable the brush tool. I'm, again, I'm going to start with a very, very large brush. I'm at 500 uh, pixels in diameter, black paint. Same flow as and uh, pass as before. And the first thing I'm going to do is like make this nice gray halo effect like I've always been doing and the back the right side of this is going to be just a little bit darker okay so now here's the here's the tough part um, what I have to do like I said is I have to establish I'll zoom in on the top here and let me change my cursor okay this left side of the very top has to be uh, pretty bright and this side has to be dark so there's kind of a demarcation straight down the middle of this this cone um, it's not that simple but you, I mean the the right side is darker than the left side if the lights coming from the left right that makes sense what we have to do is we have to like our shading has to follow the contour of the object and that's that's the tricky part so let's mess around with this and see how far I get um, first let me just go straight down if I hold down the shift key okay so that's kinda like my border okay um, does that follow the contour of the cone? No, it does not. Okay, but so that's what I got to do now. Increase my brush to 250. And now I'm going to follow in like this sweeping motion. I'm clicking, holding, dragging, and, and going like in this kind of like fan, fanning out from the top. And I'll. Um, Again, that's, I've said this quite a, several times, but it's hard to talk and do this at the same time. Um, now I can see mistakes here. There's like too much of this blotchiness right here that I got to address that. Okay, but I'm 
trying to follow the contour of this and like as it is right now what you're looking at it's not good okay because this is way way too dark and blotchy so let me I gotta even that out I'm gonna increase the brush darken this a little bit I'm at about 400 right now and I'm gonna start to blend in things and this is like not looking too hideous anymore it's looking okay but not great um, there's still there I used the 500 pixel width brush <clears throat> and I blended in the uh, the black on the right side now the um, let's go back to my reference here let's go back to this big one or this stark one here let's add a uh, bright highlight going this way so I'm gonna I'm still on black <clears throat> I'm gonna blend this in just a little bit more use white paint crank down the uh, my brush size is now like 150 and I'm gonna put in some white here on my screen it is working it's probably so subtle you probably can't see it but yeah that's working okay let me go back to black blend this in a little bit okay now what's what's messed up here is let me change my cursor so you can this thing here is this blotchy black blob that um, is not working the uh, the demarcation from here to here is too severe so I'm gonna paint this over with white until it looks halfway decent I go B for brush tool I'm using white paint now and I'm just kinda evening that out uh, black paint this is the tough part up here getting this like that, but that's looking pretty good actually. Um, so what I want to do, this is hard. I'm gonna with black paint. I'm gonna sweep this way. Again, if you increase the brush, you can blend in stuff. The thing you don't want to do is is paint on just like one. You want to sweep the entire contour of the object, of the uh, cone. And again, you know what, there's no shame in hitting the delete key and doing this all over again. Okay, so like I'm starting to get too dark here, so I'm going to go to white paint and I'm going to like make sure I maintain some reflected light over here once again I'm going to brighten this up a little bit I'm on, using white paint at 175 right now and I'm what I'm doing is brightening up the highlights here and let me see what else is going on here that looks okay I'm gonna really I saw white paint I'm gonna increase the brush and I just I'm just going to blend this so it's much smoother. The only thing that looks weird right now, let me change the cursor, is this little chunk right here. Um, that needs to be darker, so I'm going to hit black. Brush tool. Uh, 175. And I'm just going to blacken this in here. And I could fiddle with this forever and ever and for all eternity. I'm not going to. Black, I'm going to increase the brush to 600 and then put more of a nice dark edge back here. Just to, if this will, if I put a nice dark edge here, it'll bring out the highlight much better. So now we're cooking here. That's starting to look pretty good. Um, this 
is too. The, okay, look, I, I'm, this is. I'm trying to like show you my mistakes so you guys can learn. Great, uh, nice bright highlight. Nice, nice right here. Nice, pretty good. Then it gets gray. So that that's like not making sense. So I gotta fix that. I gotta like change this gray to a white or whiter at least. And there, now that's starting to make sense now. Okay. Once again, I know I'm repeating myself. Um, this isn't easy. It takes practice. You're going to have to do it a couple times. Don't be afraid to hit the delete key and try again. So that's our sphere. Or pardon me, that's our cone. Come over to your... Uh, layers palette, you know the drill, just like we did before. Select the two cone layers, group them by hitting the little group icon at the bottom of your palette. Call it, you guessed it, cone. Okay. And there is our cone, and then we're going to start putting our three shapes together as a composition. Save your file. See you in the next video.